Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. We're doing our next weekly energy video for the week of August 22nd through the 28th. Uh, we are starting with wrapping up Leo season. How did it go? <laughs> Moving into Virgo, I think a start of the um, start of the week here, Monday or Tuesday. How was Leo season? Did you have fun? Did you go after what you wanted? Does it feel like summer finally? How did it go for you? Let me know. Let me know how it's going for you. Leo is a fun energy. It's all about our creativity and expression, but it's also ego. So I feel like, um, you know, Virgo is coming in with like a lot of practical energy, cleaning stuff up. Um, possibly cleaning up the mess that Leo made. So is there anything in your life right now that wants to, um, we feel the urge to clean up? So themes for this week, some diplomacy, um, some committing to healthy routines. Let's get on with it. Here's, um, we're still working with the dream deck, past lives in reverse. The gift in reverse. Already I'm sensing some sort of like this, you know, the, the, this dream oracle deck is all about like past life karmic energy stuff. It's all shadow work based. So that's what we're, that's what we're getting into in these last few readings here and movement again. So you've got past life's gift and movement all in reverse. Um, there's some stagnation. There's a, there's a gift that's not being um, received due to some past life karma. Let's go ahead and read this past life in reverse because I'm actually, a pattern or history of a way of being, a history of a way of being needs to end or will carry on in this life and into the next. You have a karmic connection with someone that needs to be let go. Maybe an agreement was made in another life that is hindering you in this one, and it may be time to cut the cord with a karmic connection. Yes. That's what I was sort of sensing. I wanted to know if the, um, if the cards had said anything else. That's interesting. Okay, so yeah, from Leo into Virgo, and then Virgo new moon at the end of the week on Saturday over the weekend. So... I do see that as a sort of you know, a new opportunity, new moon, a new opportunity um, to get organized. But I would also challenge yourself this weekend with the Virgo new moon weekend to see if you can tolerate a certain amount of messiness. Because life isn't perfect after all. And we don't want our perfectionism to get in the way of our own well-being or in the way of our relationships. Oh, and by the way, the Ace of Wands, thank you for that. Injustice. Ace of Wands and Justice, yeah. Inspired action towards um, fairness. So some, I forget what transit it was, but I remember reading that there was going to be some sort of like, oh, Libra, something, Mercury moving into Libra. Diplomatic conversations. Something coming into fairness. So I don't know, did... <laughs> For some people, there might be a, a, a real mess to clean up in the sense of a, a conversation to be had about what it is, what people really want. What an open forum for discussing needs as well as the possibilities for moving forward, but not making decisions yet. That is actually makes a lot of sense for if you do have feel you have a karmic connection in this life that is linked to a past life, you may have cleared some sort of karmic debt here recently and freed yourself and now it's time to move on from this connection. It doesn't have to be like this big dramatic, like like a breakup or, or something, but the devil, yeah, getting free. The devil is what binds us. This is when the shadow speaks and the shadow wants to keep you in a dark energy cycle instead of in a growth cycle. All right. Let's see what shows up in the cards. Seven of Pentacles underneath. 
This was my personal card that I pulled for myself today, the Seven of Pentacles. You've done the work. It's clear you've already done the work. So whatever this stagnation of movement, this gift not being received, and this past, this connection need to be let go of, you're already on the other side of it. Um, the Seven of Pentacles is like you've done the work and now you get to sort of like reap the benefits of the work that you've done. I sort of see this as like the ripple effects and this is also the harvest. This is very much like what the season is right now, right? Here in the Northern Hemisphere, I'm, I'm picking, I can pick in veggies. We got the moon, the page of wands, the queen of cups, knight of cups, six of cups, 10 of cups, four of wands, the sun, ace of pentacles, not sure how reversals got into that deck. Actually, I do know. <laughs> I just remembered. But I don't like to carry reversals in that deck. I don't know. So I, I cleared them. So the theme of the reading, the work being done, the, the, some sort of initial investment um, is really working for you. I see that also there's the commitment here. This was a commitment made out of feeling. This was like a gesture of authenticity to put your time and effort into, I'll say self-discovery, self-discovery and or just um, self-discovery, but more so like working with your shadow, working with what are the parts of you that feel like the icky parts. This is really like going deep into the, um, the human psyche, honestly the moon. Okay, so you've done the work, now what? We have the page of wands, six of cups, and the sun. Page of wands. This is, in some ways, the beginning of a spiritual journey, right? Because the page is a young person, the wand representing the spirit. You know, we, we say wands are passion, willpower, desire, but all of those things come from the spirit. Okay, versus like pentacles being physical vitality. The sun also, I mean, that the sun is a very beautiful energy here. So the beginning of a spiritual journey, but also something that has, has been sparked. There's been a spark of something here. This could be about something from the Six of Cups insinuates sort of past again, maybe past life here, something in the, from the past life coming into harmony. This also could just be from like this life in the past or something you feel nostalgic towards that is making you feel very happy or focused in the present moment. Now, I, I, you know, it is interesting to me that the cards were had reversals in them. I never keep reversals. And then sometimes, you know, mistakes do happen. Um, but maybe it wasn't a mistake because I remember these cards actually, some of them being in reverse. Um, and a lot of the dream cards are here in reverse as well. Everyone's going to argue about reversals. So I'm only sort of, I'm not, I'm not saying what you should do. I'm just sort of expressing in my, for myself, my thought process and how I'm reading these cards is that If some of these were in reverse, means to me that there's some action still needing to be taken to flip those around. So you've done the work, TM, but there's still something else left you have to do. And so according to this past life card from the dream deck, it, there's something just needs to be let go of. I think you're ready to move on from something. Something that feels more like true happiness for you. The Ten of Cups. If you were at the Six of Cups, or if you're at the Six of Cups now and think that everything feels fine the way that it is, you've reached some sort of balance or harmony between yourself and your connections, you'd be settling. 
you'd be settling if you think that's all that was there for you because you have the Ten of Cups here, which is true happiness and a new opportunity. I want to show, just show you the, the visual, visualizing um, the mimicry of the artwork of the cards with these two, um, you know, the two sort of golden circles here with the sun and the pentacles. I also like to see them sort of looking at each other, facing each other with the, the Page of Wands and the Queen of Cups. The Queen of Cups here, I think, is saying to go deeper within yourself to realize more of your potential, along with the Page of Wands. I think you have more potential for, for feeling, for intuition to guide you. And that's why we look inside. That's why we look at the shadows, at the subconscious. That's why we try to learn how our brains work and what the subconscious really has to offer us. Anyways. For some of you, there might this might be like a past life partner or like a, a love sort of um, relationship. It doesn't have to be romantic, but it just could be like somebody that you have a, a connection with, maybe it's a connection that does need to be let go of. I think that you will know just based on how you feel about the relationship, if it's somebody who offers you more peace, brings more peace into your life, more harmony, or is this somebody, um, you know, who maybe is offering love and peace, but it just doesn't feel that way. So I feel like that's what the Queen of Cups here is saying is really intuit, intuit your way forward as in use your intuition to, to guide you towards your true happiness because I don't think your intuition will, will lead you astray. The sun, yes, is like happy, joyous, and futuristic. This is Leo energy. But it's also, the sun carries like a bit of a focused energy. And the Page of Wands also wants us to be focused. It wants us to take the potential that we can see in a relationship and ground it into something that's real. So it's not enough to speak of possibilities, but speak of... You know, Vir Virgo season about getting organized, so, so speak about methods of investment, like how, how are you going to be moving forward together? Let's pull a few more, a few cards for clarification. I want to know about this Ace of Pentacles that's showing up at the end. It's a brand new opportunity, but what is it bringing? Or how can we, maybe a better question it will be, what, what action can be taken to reveal this Ace of Pentacles? The High Priestess, the Tower, the King of Wands. Some major, major energy. Uh, the High Priestess, the Tower, and the King of Wands. I think you'll know when something's ready to end. Um, it may be d difficult to let it go because it might have been a situation that um, has influenced your life in some meaningful way. But when the tower comes, it's time. When the tower comes, it's, it's basically time for things to be cleared away. And a new kind of harmony wants to take the place of something that, has, something that was old. So in order for this Ace of Pentacles to appear, I think we need to let this change occur. High Priestess, and the Queen of Cups for me together. Say, go within, go, go, go deeper within yourself. Figure out what there is to learn about this next phase in your life, this next season. 
I can see how there's an energy coming in, like offering diplomacy, offering fairness. That's that Mercury and Libra showing up. But the Queen of Cups, interesting. You know, for me, it sort of feels like there's not really a decision to be made except for to, to be open to receiving more information at this time, be open to discussing, but you don't have to make any decisions at this point. Let's see the Ten of Cups. I'm just going to clarify the Ten of Cups here. How can we bring the Ten of Club, Ten of Cups energy closer to us? How do we make our way towards the Ten of Cups? Oh, there it is. The Nine of Wands, the Three of Wands, and the King of Pentacles. Yeah. So, this is about... Exceeding a karmic pattern, something that finally needs to be let go of, this will make you, this will empower you, honestly. The King of Pentacles has achieved sort of the greatest level of success, you know, greatest amount of wealth. Somehow, this doesn't have to be about money, y'all. This could just, you know, but in some physical way, like you, this could just be like in your body. Like finally feeling like yourself, finally feeling good enough, good enough to um, be generous with others, um, with your resources or in spirit. But something definitely needs to be cleared away. This is for your own, the betterment of your own mental health. This is, the, this is for your emotional health and your mental health and for your spiritual growth. I think what's manifesting here in the subconscious is wanting to have some sort of um, loyalty or commitment from somebody for the future or for some sort of like future opportunity. Um, and so that's manifesting in a way of people coming together to be truthful with one another, to offer peace and harmony um, and the sort of feeling that everybody's getting what they want. Everybody's on the same page and everybody's getting what they want. Um, but what's, what I see here is manifesting sort of in, in the mental sphere, what we're focused on is, again, shadow aspects showing or revealing part of the spiritual path, like starting the journey of like where this, this spiritual path really begins. And then maybe this like quest toward uh, self-betterment or just like self-knowledge. I think this is a really positive read, um, just that it's also, f it's very positive read, it's just heavy on the karmic sort of energy. And um, speaking of karmic energy, um, Uranus goes retrograde as well this week for the next five months. So. Uh, five months, you could say, focused on further sweeping away things that are no longer working. Um, there's a ton of planets in retrograde right now. It's like Uranus, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, and Pluto. So basically all of the big ones are in retrograde right now. Um, Uranus doesn't really care. <laughs> um, I got, that's, that's the feeling of Uranus that I like the most, and I got it from a reader, um, a cardologist actually, named Diamond on Clubhouse. She says that Uranus doesn't care. Uranus is sort of like the card of revolution. It's Aquarius, so we just had the full moon in Aquarius. Especially following Leo season, some of the energy that could be felt with this Uranus retrograde kicking off between Leo and Virgo season is zooming out to realize collective goals and where we may have been a little headstrong in going after the things that we want. There is obviously a good reason to go after the things that you want in life. Um, this is your journey after all and you need to seek out your creativity, your light, right? What makes you shine? Um, then again, it can be sometimes harmful um, in a collective manner for each of us to be 
concerned with 100% of the time, what am I getting out of this? The gift. If you're ever in a situation where you ask yourself that question, what am I getting out of this situation? And it's difficult for you to answer. Um, let it be illuminated at that point that you might be the gift in that situation. You are a connector. Um, and we need each other. So, interesting. Interesting, interesting. You know, a lot of a lot of push and pull energy here of collective goals and a personal spiritual journey all intertwined this week. I hope that whatever conversations come your way, that they are harmonious and that they do lead towards this Ten of Cups and that you are able to connect to your own spirituality and together reach for that Ace of Pentacles. Let me know how this resonates for you. Thank you to all of the subscribers, whether you're returning or brand new, welcome. I make six videos a month. Uh, that's one energy video a week, plus the two major lunations, the full moon and the new moon videos. Um, and yeah, I started this channel about eight months ago now, and it's really supporting me in my my journey, my personal journey to learn the tarot, um, which in turn has made me, I think, a better storyteller and um, supporting my own spiritual journey as well, right? So that we can not only support our own lives, but the lives of the people around us. I've been getting a lot of, in the IRL, in the IRL, I've been getting a lot of questions about how did I learn tarot so quickly so um, if you have any questions to that end, I'm happy to share anything um, about what I've done. In fact, I was thinking of making a video just about like a, a welcome video and sort of how I got started. So if you'd like to see something like that or have specific questions you'd like answered in a video such as that, just drop a comment below and I'll address it. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.